different, but it's very pretty out here. Uh, I believe they're setting up the flag now. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the show. How's everybody doing out there? XRP, the best digital asset, the fastest, most secure, most scalable, most cost efficient, eco friendly, send money anywhere in the world instantly. I wanted to go over some cryptocurrency news along with a couple uh, XRP articles. Let's go ahead and get right into this. Ripple may review its policy around publishing transaction data but not until it experiences more growth, according to Marcus Treacher, Senior Vice President of Customer Success of blockchain-based payments, uh, payments software firm. We're a very young network. It's growing very quickly. When you get to a point when you got a massive network, then you might want to say things about the flow or volume. Right now, we're still young. We're still growing. So we talk about the growth rate. We talk about coverage. And we talk about the time we take to deliver end to end. That's what we put out. And that's enough to give a comfortable indication to where we're heading and the impact that we are having, says Treacher. Ripple has not indicated when transfer data would become available. The company does not publicize its growth rate, coverage, and delivery time or ledger's close time. Quarterly XRP reports for its cryptographic ledger market are also published. The company, the company declined to comment on whether it shares its network data with prospective customers or partners. In terms of transaction rates and delivery rates on policy, we don't, uh, do not release data, but it's certainly way up in the right space. Let's put it that way. Otherwise, you wouldn't have adoption we're getting. It's just a policy we have. In a recent paper from London Schools of Economics banking consultant Martin Walker pointed out that Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse had claims that 6% of the network of payment network swift financial transactions failed and required human intervention. Walker wrote that the 6% did not refer to the amount of swift error of errors in swift messages as claimed by Garlinghouse on multiple occasions. The figure comes from a 2014 paper published by Swift, which Walker wrote has been uh, misconstructed by Ripple. Walker reports that according to Kimo S., one of our authors of the Swift paper, the 6% error rate refers to the accuracy of the model used by the researchers to identify whether participants on the Swift network were core or per peripheral parts of the network not the accuracy of swift messages. Walker comments refers to claims made by Gra uh, Garland House presentation at the ninth high-level conference on the international monetary system in May. Another thing that is often lost upon is the op opaqueness of the problems that correspondent banks currently operates. There is a 6% error rate self-published. 6% of all swift transactions require human intervention. We were talking about the concept of automatic payment, says Treacher. With Swiss model, you start with one bank that sends a message and another bank picks up the message and each bank works on it. Sometimes it's complete. Sometimes it doesn't. Does the message always get there? Yes. So Swift would say they're highly re uh, reliable. You put one message in one end, it gets to the other end. According to Treacher, Swift's messaging model is problematic. However, if you look a bit wider, look at what happens to the message, the payment is triggering actually in many cases doesn't work because it's missing information and because the, when the banks send the payment instruction from one to another, they aren't able to talk to each other and understand upfront how they got enough information. Are they both comfortable? Are they good to make that payment? Because of that, you have, to, uh, you have this category called beneficiary claims, non-receipt. If you go to any bank, they'll point out, point you to their desk, and all the calls will be from people who believe they haven't gotten their money. And banks, all due to the transactions missing sometimes or maybe getting trapped in some queue. The transactions always had a very quick, swift network, but the whole end to end bit that is part of the swift paradigm throws out those problems. And that's really where there's been a back and forth in the media. Well, what they're pretty much saying is XRP is the swift killer and the cryptocurrency killer and XRP settles 
pretty much instantly. And Swift, even though it may not be 6%, it's still a high error rate and XRP Ripple technology can uh, bring that all down to within three seconds and they can save up to 60% on fees. Luno to bring Ripple XRP trading in Malaysia by early 2020. XRP is not only a trading instrument, but also a cross-border remittance digital currency, according to Luno GM David Lowe. Luno is focusing on customer safety and regulatory compliance. The cryptocurrency trading platform from Luno Malaysia is set to add support for Ripple XRP trading at the beginning of 2020. The company considers XRP a viable asset as it has been approved by Securities Commission SC, the head of Luno Asia, uh, in regards to the impending support. So it is definitely a possibility we are exploring. However, it is not yet listed on Luno. We can say at this time uh, is that we are planning to increase our cryptocurrency offerings as we grow while keeping customer safety and compliance with regulation at our highest priority. Luno believes that XRP is experiencing high demand in the country, not just as a trading asset, but for cross-border transfers. Introducing XRP will have a positive impact on the market as it trades alongside Bitcoin and Ethereum. Luno Southeast Asia GM David Lowe told the Malaysian Reserve that Ripple also has a remittance use case, which we are excited about. That's why we want to introduce it to the Malaysians as it allows people on the platform to access and learn about it and figure out new ways to use the technology for their benefits. So XRP continuing to do big things, uh, allowing you to send money anywhere in the world instantly with a minimal fee. Everybody's jumping on board. It looks like 2020 is going to be a good, good year for cryptocurrency and XRP. Nike holds a patent for blockchain-based sneakers, sneakers called Crypto Kicks. The U.S. Patent Office today issued sportswear brand Nike patent for its blockchain-compatible sneakers dubbed Crypto Kicks. Here's the patent right here. Patent outlines a system where blockchain can be used to attach cryptographically secured digital assets to a physical product, in this case, a sports shoe. It seems Nike's platform will also track the ownership and verify the authenticity of sneakers using the blockchain-based tech uh, based system. When you buy a pair of crypto kicks, you will also receive a digital asset attached to the unique identifier of that shoe. As a result, there is a digital scarcity of the digital assets as the production is effectively tied to the product, uh, production of real sneakers. When a consumer buys a genuine pair of shoes, a digital represent representation of a shoe may be generated, linked with the consumer, and assigned a cryptographic token, where the digital shoe and cryptographic token collectively represent a crypto cri uh, kick. When sneakers are sold to someone else, ownership can be transferred by trading both real shoe and or associated digital assets. These digital assets can be stored in what's being called a digital locker, a cryptocurrency wallet type app. But there, uh, there's more. It seems someone at Nike has been playing Crypto Kitties as owners of Crypto Kicks will be able to intermingle or breed the digital shoe with another, another digital shoe to create shoe offspring and have the offspring made as a new tangible pair of shoes. The original patent application was filed back in April. So some of these details won't come up, come up as a surprise to some. But the patent now granted by the U.S. Patent Office, perhaps we can see, can expect to see crypto kicks in the wild at some point in the future. So that's pretty cool. Nike jumping into the blockchain, uh, blockchain based space, crypto space to uh, use their blockchain technology to track their shoes. Kind of, uh, kind of what V Chain is doing. So that's pretty big. Nike's a pretty big company. They sell a lot of shoes. So. They're looking to add a cryptocurrency when you buy a shoe so everything can be tracked on the blockchain and you could verify what you're buying and make sure you're buying something that's legit. 
SBI Ripple Asia aims to take 50% of RippleNet capacity. In a meeting held yesterday in uh, Fukuoka City, SBI Ripple Asia acknowledged its plans to take up to 50% of transaction volume of the entire Ripple network. About one month ago, SBI Remit started processing real-time transfers from Japan to Vietnam. The current goal is to increase the number of existing payment quarters in Asia and add to the overall liquidity. All SBI Ripple Asia partner banks are using RippleNet to process transactions at the moment. However, after successful implementation, all financial institutions that were involved with SBI Remit and SBI Ripple Asia will be introduced to on-demand liquidity product that utilizes XRP as a cross-bridge currency in transaction. For transfers from bank to banks in S uh, Southwest Asia and the SBI Group Investment System with XCurrent is being developed in cooperation with SBI Remit, SBI Ripple Asia, and several banks in Southeast Asia. It is worth to note that XCurrent was uh, renamed to RippleNet while X Rapid Products was rebranded to on demand liquidity. As mentioned earlier, the payment quarter from Japan to Vietnam in cooperation with TP Bank was already launched in November. Roughly 40% of total transactions volume is processed via RippleNet. It looks like Ripple is set to take over the Asian markets. XRP, baby. Pro athletes. Buying into cryptocurrency, Brooklyn Nets guard Spencer uh, Dinwiddie made sure sport fans got a glimpse at the cryptocurrency world this offseason when he announced a plan to offer up his $34 million contract to investors. Dinwiddie planned to tokenize his three-year extension, selling the tokens tied to the contract to investors for the principal and interest. His plan to allow investors to invest in the first ever security represented by a for, uh, professional athlete investment token or PAINT is detailed on his website. He plans on offering a minimum of 33 tokens worth of 4.95 million to a maximum of 90 tokens worth 13.5 million. While the plan is still currently held up because the NBA has rejected it, Dinwiddie believes blockchain technology can help generate and preserve wealth for athletes, artists, and influencers, he said on his website. Amid a breakout season with the Nets, Dinwiddie wasn't available for comment, but plans are laying the groundwork for the usage of cryptocurrency by athletes across sports, said Tonya Evans, Associated Dean of Academic Affairs and Professor of Law at the University of New Hampshire Franklin Pierce School of Law. Evans is also a the creator and coordinator of the school's blockchain, cryptocurrency, and law certificate program. Evan said it remains to be seen whether Dinwiddie will succeed, but believes his plan has a solid chance. It will be very hard for the league to stop him legally because the arrangement is not tied to his contract, but to the amounts promised over the three years, Evan said. Once received, Dinwiddie will use his salary to pay early investors with interest. The league and teams cannot tell players what or what house or what car to buy, and they cannot control the investments or businesses agreements they make. So that's pretty cool. Blockchain and cryptocurrency coming to sports and athletes, uh, artists, musicians, uh, along with like Nike and stuff like that. Um, blockchain is only going to continue to grow. Cryptocurrency, DLT, it's only going to continue to grow. This is just a start of things to come like i said 2020 looks to be a good a good year for cryptocurrency and blockchain ing want banks want to give clients a compliant way to store cryptocurrency major uh, douche bank ing is developing technology so that clients can safely store digital assets like cryptocurrencies it sees increasing opportunities surrounding digital assets, both asset-backed and native cert security tokens. ING noted a, focusing, a focus on providing a compliant way to access this sector. Keeping cryptocurrency safe has become a business in itself. Last year, prominent cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase began offering its own custody services. 
while Coinbase is certainly a trusted exchange for household names like ING to offer similar service would be a big boon boom for digital asset industry. Not all banks are sold on the idea. However, earlier this year, Hard Fork reported that another institution, ABN, uh, AMRO, ING, shelved plans for a custodial cryptocurrency wallet, citing lack of interest. Five charged in a 722 million crypto mining Ponzi scheme. Guys, be careful out there with these scammers, these schemes. And some of these exchanges, just be careful what you're holding. Uh, make sure to keep the majority of your assets offline. Anything can happen. Anything can be hacked. The U.S. Department of Justice has charged five individuals with running a high-tech Ponzi scheme that allegedly fleeced investors out of over $700 million by falsely claiming clients' big returns as part of a crypto mining operation. All four of the men arrested Tuesday are being held in federal custody pending court hearings, according to federal authorities. The wire fraud conspiracy charges carries a maximum penalty of 20 years in federal prison and a $250,000 fine, according to the Justice Department. This conspiracy to sell unregistered securities charge carries a maximum penalty of five years in prison as well as a $250,000 fine. Since June 2014, the five de uh, defendants allegedly helped run an operation called Bitcoin Network that mined cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. Prosecutors say investors would buy shares in the company in hopes of profiting from firms, crypto, uh, crypto mining pools, which are used to generate virtual currencies, authorities say. Bitcoin Network clients who paid $99 membership fee were also encouraged to record, uh, recruit others to invest in the firm and its crypto mining capabilities. According to the federal indictment unsealed this week, investors also were provided the option to pay additional money for shares in what the Bitcoin Network purported were three mining pools, prosecutors say. Rather than investing in membership fees and profits in the mining operation, um, weeks. They allegedly took the client's money for themselves, knowing that the company's crypto mining capabilities would not be profitable, according to the indictment. The indictment describes defendants used the complex world, world of cryptocurrencies to take advantage of unsuspecting investors, says U.S. Attorney for New, New Jersey Craig Carpentino. What they have allegedly did. What they allegedly did amounts to little more than a modern high-tech Ponzi scheme that defrauded victims of hundreds of millions of dollars. So again, guys, be careful out there. Everyone is trying to take advantage of this cryptocurrency space and take your money. Whether it's a scammer on Twitter offering to double your cryptocurrency or some exchanges opening up and exit scamming or um, trading bot apps, all that other stuff. All The best thing to do is just accumulate, buy your crypto on the dips, and just put it away on your ledger. Anybody asking for information like this are more than like, likely trying to scam you. Just like this one right here, offering you to double your crypto or send your crypto here and get this amount back. Just don't do it. It's all a scam. And more than likely, you're not going to get your cryptocurrency back. So just accumulate what you can on the dips and then store it away. Be patient and hold on. Major bank ING looks to offer cryptocurrency custody. Uh, ING is working on plans to offer its customers secured cryptocurrency storage. Citing sources close to the matter. Reuters relays that cryptocurrency will be among one of ING's main many blockchain initiatives in the near future. ING sees increasing opportunities with the regard to digital assets on both assets backed and native security tokens. The bank stated the bank added that the enterprise was both an attempt to develop the technology behind cryptocurrencies as well as allow clients um, uh, compliant and safe exposure to them. This comes a few months after investing giant Fidelity 
launched its own digital currency custody service is an initiative intended towards institutional investors. Swiss cryptocurrency bank SCBA expands to nine new markets. The Switzerland-based cryptocurrency-focused bank SCBA has announced it's now taking in client from nine additional jurisdictions apart from its home market in Switzerland. According to the announcement, uh, SCBA is now taking clients from Singapore, Hong Kong, UK, Italy, Germany, France, Austria, Portugal, and the Netherlands. The move will also see the banking startup taking in institutional clients from these jurisdictions. SEBA notably received a, a banking license from the Swiss Financial Market uh, Supervisory Authority, FINMA, in August this year and was set up in April of last year. The bank CEO was quoted as saying, with our service, we want to redefine the customer bank relationship and, gave, and give clients a simple but the most secure banking experience, both in the new and old financial world. Its services also include the tokenization of rights, assets, and investment products. Being a crypto-focused startup, it also offers wallet and e-banking services to its clients, allowing them to store five cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Stellar Lumens, Litecoin, and Ethereum Classic. The firm isn't alone in offering, however, its rival uh, Sigum. Signum has also gotten a banking license in Switzerland in August and went live a month after. So things are starting to ramp up everywhere blockchain, crypto. Uh, it's coming, guys. The Duche Bank officials predict cryptocurrency becoming mainstream by 2030. The global financial investment bank giant has released its Imagine 2030 report where top officials attempt to predict the decade ahead as the timeline for mass adoption of cryptocurrencies such as Dash. The report admits that cryptocurrencies have not managed to take off as means of payments despite their well-known benefits such as security, speed, minimal transaction fees, ease of storage, and relevance in the digital era. However, the report then discusses how this can be changed as cryptocurrencies overcome regulatory hurdles as governments, banks, card providers, and cryptocurrency advocates realize their common goals of eliminating cash. Until now, cryptocurrencies have been additions rather than substitutes to the global inventory of money. Over the next decade, this may change. Overcoming regulatory hur uh, hurdles will broaden their appeal and raise the potential to eventually replace cash. Nevertheless, the report extrapolates current usages, adoption rates, and predicts a possible 200 million blockchain wallet, wallet users in 2030. Cryptocurrency reports discuss the three main hurdles that cryptocurrency has to overcome to see continue adoption and growth. The first is to become a legitimate in the eyes of governments and regulators, which will come from overcoming the second hurdle of bringing stability to the price and bringing advantages to both merchants and consumers. The third hurdle includes allowing for global reach in the payment market, which means alliances must be forged with key stakeholders. Mobile apps such as Apple Pay, Google Pay, card providers such as Visa, MasterCard, and retailers such as Amazon and Walmart. Nevertheless, the report also admits that these open up new concerns such as uh, basing a robust financial system entirely on electricity consumption, cyber attacks, and other digital security concerns. The Duche Bank reports supports current market trends that cryptocurrency struggles to see significant adoption when simply attempting to skirt to governments and banks and try to initiate, initiate a monetary revolution on its own. An example, privacy coins that are facing increasing delisting pressure on exchanges. However, coins that focus on integrations and working with different parties tend to see more mainstream acceptance and face less back, uh, less lashback like XRP, which is working with everybody who's moving money and value. While cryptocurrency advocates will often point out the, uh, that some of these solutions are centralized or compromise the ultimate goal 
of having non-government backed fiat. It does help the medium term goal of getting more mainstream adoption. Then the long term goal can be after more adoption is achieved and consumers and merchants understand the technology better. The differences between centralized and decentralized options can be highlighted. So that's pretty much it, guys. As you guys can see, cryptocurrency and blockchain is a real is coming. 2020 looks to be the year, a good year. Uh, more and more banks, uh, big companies are starting to get into the blockchain space. Nike, more banks in different countries. Uh, now it's coming to music, arts, sports. I mean, blockchain and crypto is taking over. It's the new internet. Um, and as always, keep on stuffing those bags, guys. I'm not a financial advisor, but you guys know XRP is the best, the fastest, the most secure, most scalable, most cost-efficient, eco-friendly. Send money anywhere in the world instantly. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. That's all I have for this one. I'm out, guys. Peace out.